Hello everybody, Lord of Our Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video, and today we will be talking about Dynamist. Today is the first day of Pendulum Month, which if you don't know, is a month where I will be talking about nothing but pendulums in terms of my archetype analyses and deck profiles. Other stuff like news and ban lists and also a collab coming up are exempt from this, but for the most part, Pendulums all month long. And today, Dynamus is a fun one because it's a personal one for me. Dynamus is the last deck I took to a regional with, if I remember correctly. I don't believe I went to a single regional after Lynx, after Lynx came out because I was just very, very busy with college. And the, the last regional I went to... I loved it so much. Dynamists are such a fun archetype to play. They were a really strong rogue deck at the time. And unfortunately, they, like most Pendulum decks, kind of fell to the wayside after Master Roll 4 came around. And that's the really sad thing. It, it really especially sucks because this deck is actually able to play around Master Roll 4 quite well. It's one of the few Pendulum decks that are able to do that. Which just goes to show how much potential this archetype has if Konami ever wants to flesh it out, which considering how there's just so many types of dinosaurs there are, they could totally just add like as many cards as they want to this archetype as possible until we just run out. <laughs> we'll go extinct by that time, just like the dinos did. So, yeah, so what the heck are uh, dinomists? Well, they're dinosaurs mixed with machines, an idea and concept so cool to made a video game out of it. So, dinomists are a pendulum archetype focusing primarily on level 4s and level 5s with scales of 3 and 6 typically speaking well so far all of them who knows that might change a future support Konami is weird like that their boss monsters are both level 5 but however they do have other level 5s that are more utility and the level 4s are very very versatile with their effects they are a beat down control deck I know that's a weird oxymoron there but however it makes sense as you play the deck the deck was very much more of a control deck back in the day but it's now really got a more focus on that beatdown effort because they can't make full use of the back row dynamists have a lot of continuous spells and traps or at least rather their continuous trap is a card that is integral to their strategy and their continuous spell is just flat out amazing for the archetype especially for master roll 4 so therefore they are very susceptible to getting clogged up in the back row ever since pendulums got moved to the back row on that note speaking of their pendulums every single dynamist has one or two effects depending on what their scale is in the pendulum zone the pen the well pendulum scale sixes all basically prevent from targeting and then the pendulum scale threes prevent from destruction whenever you do that they then destroy themselves which isn't a big deal because well you can pendulum summon them back or if you have dynamis charge out they'll get added back to your hand or at least once a turn and that is really where the beat down strategy comes to and also the control aspect because they're able to protect themselves while just beating down the opponent on that note the main bosses can also diss out a lot of damage. They tribute a lot. It's really weird in how this archetype works in that both of the two bosses focus on tributing your own dudes in order to do stuff. And as for the control aspects in archetype, it's not really very present. But however, the way the deck has been played really lends itself to control aspects. The only issue nowadays is that your back row is so cluttered you don't really get to do it much. So there is that to be considered as well. They're also a very battle focused archetype with a lot of their uh, effects happening to either directly activate in the battle phase or whenever they battle outright. So let's go ahead and get started talking about them. Starting with Dynamist Ankylos. Dynamist Ankylos is a level 4 water machine pendulum effect monster. He's a scale 6 so he prevents from targeting and while he's on the field as a monster you banish any monster destroyed by battle with a dynamis monster you control. He's 1500 attack by the way in 2k defense, so he's very much more so summoned in defense, but he gives all of your monsters basically a sort of dark law effect where anything they kill gets well banished. This is incredibly important to dynamis and are able to allow them to be able to just really screw over your opponent whenever it comes to running stuff over because then they can't revive it later unless they're running a banished deck. 
This also does not prevent them from being able to get their searcher off of Terra once we get to them. So this card is overall just a really great two of. Really do, you don't need more than two. Uh, three is a bit kill on it in my opinion at times, but however two is great overall. Next up we got Dynamis Stegosaur, one of the first ones and one of the worst. It's, oh boy, so Dynamis Stegosaur, he's a level three. Well, scale three, level four, water, machine pendulum. Since he's a scale three, he prevent he protects from destruction by battle or card effect, and then you destroy himself. If another pendulum monster you control battles an opponent's monster, after damage calculate you can destroy those two monsters. This guy is basically just a worse version of Ankylosaur, which is really shown off in the fact that Ankylosaur came out like a set or two afterwards, and Stegosaur kind of just fell off to the wayside. He's still okay to play as a one-of just because the deck lacks a lot of names, but however, you don't need him. He's just not very good. He's just another scale, really. So, he's a one of at best, but you don't need him if you find something better to put into the deck. Next up, we got Dynamis Plesius. Oh boy, <laughs> Nessie, but beforehand. This is the original Nessie. And I, can I just say, I love the design of the Dynamis. They all look so cool. And Plesios, I love how he's actually not in the water, he's like above it. It's just really kind of cool. Reminds me of like those steamboats that people ride in like swamps and stuff. Anyways, he's a level 4 as well. Water, Machine, Pendulum, they're all Water Machines. Uh, and he's a scale 6, so therefore he prevents from targeting, which is also really good. And while he's on the field, this is really, really important for Dynamis. All face-up monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each Dynamis card you control. Now that sounds like it's not a lot, but it stacks up so much. For one thing, it doesn't count different names. So... If you have multiple cards of the same name, it stacks up, and this also stacks if you have multiple Plesius out, so if you have two to three, you're going to be dropping everything by quite a bit. Moreover, since this is a Pendulum deck, you got to count for the fact that this will also count the Pendulum skills. They have multiple continu- well, they have a continuous spell and a continuous trap that will both count for it as well, and it's just like, you're, you're going to have a lot of monsters out, generally speaking. So therefore, this actually gets like pretty decent overall in terms of the attack lowering and defense too, not that that's as important. The biggest thing is that Dynamis for the most part have really good stat lines in general, so therefore you don't need that much of an attack drop in order to be able to run over stuff in battle, which is very important because again, a lot of this stuff triggers on battle, and Cleus banishes anything destroyed in battle, and once we get to Terra, who's next, we'll, well, search anything on battle and so on and so forth. Battling is what this deck does, and it is very, very important to it. So this just helps you clear that gap a bit better. To that extent, he was a two of at best back in the day, but I really recommend playing three nowadays just because the deck just needs all the names it can get, and generally speaking, you don't want to play Stegosaur as much, so it's just another scale and name in general. And also, this thing has decent stats too, 1700, that's not bad. <laughs> Moving on, we got Pterodon, or Turan, I should say. I am so used to just filling out the rest of the name in my head. Uh, Terra is a level 4, 1800 attack, th scale 3, so he prevents from battle and destruction. And whenever he destroys an opponent's monster for battle, you can add a Dynamis card from your deck to your hand. That's not once per turn. You get out multiple of these, or you give one the ability to attack multiple times, and you're going to be able to search multiple times. This thing is really, really good, and is your main searcher for the deck. He also, honestly, has probably my favorite design next to Rex, uh, once we get to him. And it's just really cool looking. I love all the sharp edges. It's just like, yeah, this thing is made for flying. Really good card all around, good stats at 1800 attack power, defense doesn't matter honestly. You play three of him, well because he's a searcher. Next up is Dynamis Brachion. Now this is a card that I actually used to hate back in the day and I did not play. I really feel stupid looking back back on myself back then. And especially since nowadays this is a 2-3 to three of in the deck. So what the heck is this thing? Well, it's a level 5, 2,000 attack, 800 defense. Scale 6, so it prevents from targeting, which is really good. And if you do not control a Dynamis Brachion in your monster zone, and your opponent controls a monster that has the highest attack on the field, even if it's tied, you can spell summon this card from your hand. Again, this deck is all about battling, so therefore you are going to be wanting to, well, be able to catch up to your opponent's attack power. 
and this thing does that it's basically a cyber dragon and I just realized I should have made a Power Rangers Dino Thunder reference in the title because this thing looks so much like the Black Rangers uh, Stegosaur. <laughs> or, no, not Stegosaur, Brachion. What the heck am I thinking? The Brachion, you know, the big black one. Um, but anyways, this card is really, really good and combos really well with another monster that I didn't really, well, that I wrote off back in the day, uh, but is now really good. Dynamus Ceratops, who is a level 5, scale 3, so kind of like the parallel to good old Brachion at 2100 attack and 400 defense. If all monsters you're, you control are Dynamus monsters, minimum 1, and none are Ceratops, you can spell some of this card from your hand. So right off the bat, if you're going second, which you want to do with this deck, because this is a go second deck, big time. If you open Brachion and Ceratops, you have several plays you can do. So you spell summon Brachion, then you spell summon Ceratops, and you can either go for a Link 2, which is really, really good, and honestly, if you have the uh, resources to do so and be able to set your pendulum skills and go on from there, I recommend to do that, because then you can just pendulum summon them back and then go for even more plays. Or... You can make Cyber Dragon Nova and then go into Infinity, and Infinity is still a good card. He's just not seeing much play because, I mean, there's nothing really that can cheese him out anymore. But, however, these two are just so integral to the deck nowadays. You, you can get away with playing two, but I really recommend playing at least three of one, if not both, because they are so integral to the deck in order to make your Link plays, and also, of course, good ol' cyber dragon infinity because you don't really want to waste your boss monsters on those two speaking of let's go ahead and talk about those boss monsters starting off with their first boss monster and my personal favorite of the two dynamist rex the best design of these guys <laughs> just right off the bat just i love this thing it's so cool uh boy so he's a level 5, 2400 attack 2200 defense scale 6 so he prevents from well good old targeting and if this card attacks at the end of the damage step, you contribute one other Dynamist monster, then activate one of these effects. This card can make in a second an opponent's sorry, this card can attack an opponent's monster again in a row, and if it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. Cool, that's not very common. Um, but by the way, neither of these effects are once per turn, which is just insane. Shuffle, or you can shuffle one card from your opponent's hand at random or their side of the field in the deck, then this card gains a hundred attack. The attack gain is mid goal at best like minuscule at best it's not very very helpful this thing's already 2400 it's gonna be a run over most anything and if you have plezzy off it's gonna be able to run over almost everything on top of that though whenever he kills a monster in battle just tribute a thing and get a card out of your opponent's hand or well get a, get a problem card out of your opponent's field oh your opponent has bills you can't run over it in battle run over something else effective rex tribute that dynamist and then, oh hey, get rid of Beals. This doesn't target, by the way. It's like Tiara Misu in that regard, and it is so, so good for this deck. This thing is still, honestly, my favorite boss between the two bosses, and I do recommend playing two of them at minimum. You can get away with one. I've seen some people play them or play one instead, because the tributing and the fact that it does it after the battle isn't as good so therefore you can't really be able to get off a lot of plays in fact most people tend to prefer to focus on spinos which i can totally get why because he's otk city but rex is well the annoying one that gets rid of stuff out of your opponent's hand and spot removal stuff without targeting so i really do prefer rex overall but however talking about spinos we can't get over this thing this thing is just muck amazing Dynamus Spinos is a level 5 water machine pendulum, 2500 attack, 1800 defense, scale 3, so it prevents uh, good old destruction by battle or an opponent's card effect, and then his effect on field, which again is not once per turn, there's no once per turns on any of these things, it's stupid. This card, once per, well not once per turn, you contribute one other Dynamus monster, then activate one of these effects. This card can make an, an attack, this card can attack your opponent directly this turn, or and this card can make a second attack during each battle phase in this turn. So what you can do, if you want to go this route, you can drop a limiter removal. Use this thing's effect to tribute two other dudes so they can attack directly twice. And then you got a 5k that can attack directly twice. <laughs> 
it's really, really stupid, and I don't really recommend it because limiter removal is not searchable, but it is at 3 now, if I remember right, uh, so you do have that option. But the big thing is, is you can tribute a dude to attack twice, tribute another dude to attack directly, and you can go for just ping for 5,000 damage, which is really, really good. And of course, because you're playing a pendulum deck, you can just summon those resources back. That being said though, in my experience playtesting the deck, you rarely ever have the resources to be able to do that, uh, which isn't good. <laughs> Maybe once this deck gets some more support, god knows when that will be, you might be able to do that more effectively, in which case I can totally see the good old limit removal combo being used more often but right now i just don't see that happening very often i have been playing this deck religiously for like the past week and i have never had an opportunity to do that granted it is a really big amount of damage you can do but that's a if impossible win scenario not a always going to be end game scenario and heck, even then, you're only getting 5,000 damage. You still need to get 3,000 more damage uh, in somehow, which, I mean, you can do with another Spinos and just have it attack directly twice, but then you're still distributing four more monsters. <laughs> you know, about four total. Uh, I am very, very mixed on Spinos, but he is a really good, powerful boss monster, and I can see why some people would want to focus more on him than Rex for the pure damage potential this thing can have <laughs> rivaling the freaking cyber dragons in terms of damage you can do that being said play one to two of it you don't really need three same thing with rex moving on to the spells we got dynamic power load or sorry dynamic power load it's a field spell unfortunately without dynamist in the name yeah for some reason konami was obsessed with not putting archetypal names in field spells for a while and it really, really sucks. This isn't the only one in the situation. Uh, both Magic Specters and Ignites also have this issue. I think there's a few others as well, but those are just the first three that come into mind. And Dynamic Power Load is very weirdly important for Dynamis, but you can also get away without playing it if you don't want to. Uh, so basically what it does, all Dynamis monsters in the field gain 300 attack and defense. Right off the bat, that was something that Konami was also weirdly obsessed with doing for a long while with, well, field spells back in the day. But it really helps out with Dynamis again, because these guys are, well, freaking beaters. They all want to be able to attack over stuff, and of course you combine that with Plezioff dropping everything by 100 on your opponent's side of the field. It can stack up pretty good and close that gap, allowing your monsters to attack over more things. That being said though, this thing also has another really good effect. If a dynamous monster you control battles, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. This effectively turns all of your dudes into Armades, which is freaking amazing, because now you can attack directly without, well, fear of anything, or you can attack over something without fear of anything. Oh, your opponent's got a floater? Cool, run over it. Your opponent's not going to get to trigger it. Or better yet, your opponent has a monster that, like, I don't know, destroys a monster whenever it's attacked? Cool, you don't have to care anymore. Or, oh, your opponent's got a battle fader in hand? Oh, I don't care anymore. This is a really, really good card for the deck, but that lack of a name makes it not searchable. And with terraforming at one, it's, it's not particularly good. <laughs> Like, you can totally get away without playing it. That's the big thing. If you're going to play it, play at least two, maybe even three, just so you see it, along with all good old terraforming. But, however, you can totally get away without playing it, in which case you got more room for hand traps, which this deck greatly benefits from having, or heck, more draw power. It's down to you. So, yeah, I can see an argument for both cases in playing power load and not. So, really, it comes down to your personal preference. Now we got the good thing, Dynamus Charge. Continuous spell card. When this card is activated, add one Dynamus monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, if a Dynamus card or cards is added from the field to your extract face up, add one of those cards to your hand. You can only activate one Dynamus Charge per turn. Hey, we finally have some once per turn clauses on these guys. So this is the main searcher. You use this to search out usually Terra, and then Terra will search out anything else you need. Or vice versa, Terra, Terra will search out Charge. It's very, very simple. Charge is very, very good for the deck, and is part of what makes this deck playable under Master Roll 4. Because, oh hey, I just Link Summon for a Link 2. Effective Charge, add one of my dudes back to my hand, and then place it in my scale. 
or pendulum summon it from my hand. I now have less resources that I need to waste in order to be able to pendulum summon multiple monsters again. This is absolutely fantastic for the archetype and it's something that, that well, more pendulum decks need in order to be playable under Master Roll 4. So yeah, this card is really good, play three of it. It does suck that it is only once per turn, and also the add effect, the second effect, is mandatory, which means you don't always want it to trigger, but it will trigger. Which means if like you know your opponent has a ghost ogre, they can ogre it, which is very, very annoying. But I digress, you still need to play three. It's what makes this deck playable under Master Roll 4, along with, well, Ceratops and Brachion being just really good cards overall. Then we got our arguably best card, Dynamis Howling, Continuous Trap Card. This is what, their last bit of support and is what made them playable as a viable rogue deck in the last dawning, like the final days, the dog days, whatever you want to call it, of Pendulum Format, because this came out in freaking Maximum Crisis. <laughs> Konami just took forever to give this card to us and it drove us nuts. So, what the heck does this thing do? When this card is activated, you can place one or two Dynamis Pendulum Monsters from your deck into your Pendulum Zone. Right off that, you play three. <laughs> this card is just straight up A, activate both scales, call it a day. Uh, but you cannot Pendulum Summon Monsters until the end of the next turn, except Dynamis Monsters, even if this card leaves the field. Then, once per turn, if this card is already face up in your Spell and Trap Card Zone, you can tribute one Dynamis Monster, then target a card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. This is where the like the control aspect of the archetype comes into play, because Howling is able to just troll your opponent so hard. For one thing, neither one of these effects are once per turn. Well, okay, Dynamis Howling is once per turn in the sense that it's a that it's just a soft once per turn. But if you have multiple Howling out. You can each you can use each one once per turn. So I have two Howling, I have two Dynamis. My opponent tries to summon two monsters. Effect of both Howling, bounce them both back. It's very 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 annoying for your opponent to have to deal with, and is just absolutely freaking amazing. Or better yet, let's say you activate a Howling, and then you get your two scales. Your opponent then destroys them. Like I don't know, with like double like Twin Twister or something. Well, then you flip over your other Howling, get your scales back right away. This is really, really, really good for the deck. It's not a hard once per turn on either effect. That's what I really should be saying, is that it's just not a hard once per turn. And it allows the deck to be able to actually really control the board and force your opponent to have to make thoughtful plays in against this deck. Throw on top of that your protection from destruction and targeting for each of your dynamis, as long as you got scales set up, which this card helps keep your scales set up. This is really, really good. You play three of this. It is just the flat out, some of the best pendulum support I've ever seen for a pendulum based archetype. And then we got Dynamist Rush. Normal trap card, spell summon one Dynamist monster from your deck, and if you do, it's unaffected by your other card effects. Also destroy it during the end phase. You can only create one rush per turn. Why did they slap the hard ones per turn effect on this card? <laughs> Okay, so basically it chooses out a Dynamist and oh hey, it's unaffected by anything for a turn. This is really good for the most part, that unaffected by everything actually like is very, very annoying. Especially if you summon out Spinos or Rex and your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with them. Now, granted, it does get destroyed during the end phase, but hey, you can just pound and summon it. Or better yet, charge will just add it to your hand. So, it's not the worst thing in the world. You do play, well, I recommend playing two of it. It's really, really handy. It can help save your butt during your opponent's turn. And, of course, it's just generally a good card. It's a free special summon, one for one. And even then, that, it's like just basically like a Rota almost, but it summons a monster instead because, well, Pendulums are kind of sort of indestructible and in that you just get it back and you'll be able to keep bringing it back. So, very good card. It's a decent two of if you want to play it. I can see why some people wouldn't want to play it because it's a trap and it's slow and eh, it trips a bed in Modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I totally get it. So, it's down to what you really have your preference set at. Then we got Dynamist Eruption, the worst card in this archetype. Beautiful artwork though, is that like Jurassic World in the back or freaking, um, I don't know, what is it called again? The Fire Fist, uh, no, not Fire Fist, Fire King Island, yeah, Fire King Island. It looks like it in the back, but that would imply it's in the, what, Dragon Slayer lore, which uh, makes weird, it doesn't make sense. Anyways, Eruption, 
Oh boy. If a dynamous monster you control, or monsters you control, is destroyed by battle or card effect, target a card your opponent controls, destroy it. Now, is this the worst thing in the world? No, it's not. Oh, hey, my dude got destroyed. Activate this. Destroy something. It's kind of like that trap card misfire, except it also, well, destroys something your opponent controls. It's just, well, it can destroy anything. Misfire just cannot destroy a card that destroyed something. That being said, Dynamus Eruption is just not good in Dynamus. It's, there's never a situation where you want to use it, and it just doesn't help out particularly well in what the deck wants to do. There's better options available. If you're building on a budget, or like you just have to use everything in the archetype, it's not a bad one of, I guess, but there are better options available. You know, you can just play Mirror Force if you really want to get this, some destruction going. But anyways... Yeah, I can't recommend playing Eruption whatsoever. Again, good artwork though. Finally, let's talk about my current deck profile. Now, this is not the final one. It is my current one, and I am loving it. So we got two Spinos and two Rex. Just generally good boss monsters here. Three Ceratops and two Brachion, mostly because I found that Bra uh, Ceratops is generally better in most scenarios, but Brachion's a really good starter. So, I have actually bumped up Brachion to 3 in my most recent build, which you guys can look forward to on Friday for that deck profile. This is just mostly a kind of sample guide in terms of that. So, 3 and 3, or 2 and through, uh, so on and so forth. Now, something I didn't talk about in this, because I'm not sure where I really should talk about them, but that's the Draco Slayers. The Draco Slayers uh, basically are in the same storyline <laughs> i'm not really sure how to explain it it's storyline lore whatever as the dynamis ignites and magic specters as well as also the drac overlords and the uh, what were they called um the amorphages yeah so basically they're made as generic pendulum support but they work especially well with the archetypes that came out along with them and luster pendulum is no different he's really 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 good in Dynamis and allows you to just do all sorts of stupid plays. The only issue I have is that he's a scale 5, which immediately locks you out of being able to pendulum summon your 5s. So you gotta be careful about when you do play him, but for the most part, you use him to get well Ignister Prominence and good ol' uh, the uh, Dynamic Power Load and the good ol' Magic Spectre. Well, sorry, Magister Pallet, and so on and so forth. He's also just a generally good monster, and his effect in the Pendle Zone is really, really handy. In the that, well, you can just pop anything and search out another one. Which, if you have Charge Out, is just so stupid because it's effectively a plus two. Well, I guess really not because you just get him back your resource that you just destroyed. But like you, like let's say for instance, activate him with Terra, then you activate his effect to destroy Terra to search out another Terra, and then you get well your Terra back because you had Charge Out, and then you activate. Terra again, you basically just, you did nothing. Well, I mean, you did a plus one, but you don't lose any resources, which is really good for what this wants to do. Then we got three Terra, three Plesio, so on and so forth. One Stego, two Ancleo, and then two uh, Ash and two Ogre. Just generally speaking, good stuff all around for what the deck wants to do. One Regeki, one Harpy's Feather Duster. I know you could easily just also go with two what is it called lightning storm but like for me personally i like to try and build this like i can build it irl so i go with regekian and go to harpy's feather duster because i cannot drop a hundred dollars on lightning storms right now so if you have lightning storms you can play those instead it's down to you they're basically the same thing triple pot of desires so just to give this deck more consistency double pendulum paradox this is a really good card overall you add two pendulum monsters with different names but the same skills from your extract to your hand and just allows you to just keep on plussing and keep on going with being able to actually pendulum summon multiple monsters one called by the grave because this deck needs it just getting ashed sucks and you don't want to deal with that three charge two rush and three howling all make for the complete package now with the extract for the most part, I would say it's down to your personal opinion. I do recommend having at least one of each of the Draco Slayers. Maybe not Magister Paladin because he's not as good as he used to be. But if you're going to play the Draco Slayers, you might as well play their extract versions because they all summon more in combo and stuff. It's just really, really handy. And that Ignister Prominence can summon another Draco Slayer from deck. The Fusion one can summon another one from Graveyard while also protecting your Pendulum skills. And of course the Xyz one can cheese one out from your extract. So, really good cards all around. Then we got two Cyber Nova and two Infinity. 
you know, just for the general infinity package. I like putting one Volcasaurus too for just that burn damage for game. Degas or Emerald is really handy for being able to recycle stuff from Graveyard. Now for the links, the only two that I would say are explicitly like you need to have them is Me Star Boy for just his pendulum for his scales. I mean not his scales, his link arrows, and also his attack buff, which is really 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 handy for Dynamus and well again they are a battle focused archetype, and that attack buff really does stack with along with of course Gil Plesio, so it can really get pretty beefy right from there. And then you got Cleefort Genius. Now Cleefort Genius is the Cleefort Link Monster, and it is flat out stupid in Dynamis, okay? It needs two machines to go into. And whenever you pendulum summon, well, if you special summon two monsters to its uh, Link Arrows, like points, uh, at the same time, you can add, you can add any level five machine pendulum, for, well, any level five machine from your deck to your hand. Which, hey, look at that, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine level five machines to search out with him. And he's the main one you're gonna go for because he's also unaffected by spells and traps and non-link monster effects. It's really, really good. And honestly, I have dropped Proxy Dragon for a second one because he's just that good. And I don't really make Proxy Dragon ever. He's just there for more arrows so I can cheese out more dudes. But this deck is able to get around Master of Force so much it's not really necessary. Except for Metaltron's another really good one just to get more arrows down there. And then of course Saruja and Apollo said just for general utility. Down here I got Pendulum Area, which is a really good trap that I'm trying to find a deck that it can find a home in. So Pendulum Area is a regular old trap card that says activate only if all monsters you control are Pendulum Monsters. Destroy both of your scales. Neither player can spell summon monsters for the rest of the turn except for Pendulum Summon. So, oh hey, your opponent activates Shadal Fusion. Okay, activate area, destroy both of my scales. My opponent can't, well, I don't know, Fusion Summon. <laughs> it's a really, really stupid good trap card. It just doesn't have a home. And it's just like, I'm trying to find a deck that it's good in. And I almost feel like good old Dynamis are there. But at the same time, it's just like the main deck is so clogged for room. Like, I can probably drop Stego and uh, good old Call by the Grave and maybe Regeki or Harpy's Feather Duster for it, along with a Duelist Advent to search it out. But at the same time, it's like, is it really worth it? Is it more of a side card? It's something I've been testing around. So, do be look forward to the upcoming deck profile with duels to show off what the deck can do and also how it can fail and all that other fun stuff because I, I am trying to show off some of my misplays with stuff and also losses along with also wins and all that so what the deck can do because the deck can do a lot but it can also suffer a lot so yeah anyway so what are my overall thoughts on Dynamis? well the first and foremost I would love more spells they have three traps Two of which are, well, one's good, like really, really good, one's okay, and then like one's horrible. But they only have two spells. They have a field spell that's not even a Dynamis card, and then they have that really, 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 really good a continuous spell. And that's it. I would love to see something else, like maybe a Dynamis Monster Reborn, or Dynamis, like, I don't know, Fusion, considering they were the Fusion with a uh, good old Draco Slayer, maybe you can focus on the Fusion aspect. I'd love to see that. Give them a Pendulum Fusion. <laughs> I'd love it. Uh, but I don't see that happening. It'd be interesting, to say the least. That being said, though, I just want more spells in general. Something, anything. As long as it's good, I'd love to see what they can do with it. I'd love to see them get an own archetypal, well, Link Monster. As much as I love it that <laughs> Cleaver Genius is basically their archetypal Link Monster, I'd love to see them get one, too. Maybe one that can, like, cheese out more dudes from your deck, or, like, maybe give an attack buff or double attacks. I don't know. Just give them something cool. Maybe a Link 3, so that after you summon something, like, with good old genius and get a search then you can go for the link three i don't know it's something that i'd really like to see because i feel like most pendulum decks need their own link monster especially since electromite is still banned <laughs> i am very salty about that still anyways the deck is in a pretty decent position at the moment but it really does need that more support and i think the biggest issue it needs more consistency and good names. The deck really could use more monsters that are good. <laughs> you know, give us a better scale 3 than Stegosaur so we have another scale 3 to have. So, yeah, that's just another option. 
What are you guys' thoughts and opinions on Dynamist? Have you guys played the deck? Have you tried it out? Have you played Horizon Zero Dawn? It's basically Dynamist, but like the game. I have not played that game. I really need to play that game. Uh, why have I not played that game yet? It's dinosaurs as robots. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, what do you guys think about Dynamist? What do you guys think about the first good old Pendulum Month video? I am very, very excited for this. I I really, really want to get in the groove of things to like uploading maybe twice a week. And that's part of the reason why I'm doing this, so I can have more motivation to actually get out two videos a week. That's my goal. And yeah, what do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, have your birthday. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Please share this video. And peace out. See y'all later. Goodbye. Thank you all for watching the video. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And see y'all later.